Welcome. Today we are going to go replace the internal buffer weight of the Geisley Super 42 Air 15 carbine buffer system from a default H1 configuration to an H2 configuration using a, another Geisley tungsten buffer weight. Why do that? Well, on an Air 15 carbine buffer system, including the Super 42, there are three weights inside configuration of which depends on the mixture of tungsten weights to steel weights. An H0 carbine buffer would have no tungsten weights, an H1 would have one tungsten weight to two steel weights, an H2 has a two tungsten weights to one steel weight, and H3 has three tungsten weights, but why are we going to go replace it to an H2 configuration? Originally, when the Geisley Super 42 carbine buffer system came out, it only came as an H1 configuration. Yet, for many configurations of rifle, including this one, a H2 buffer is ideal. This would also include the 16-inch barrel with a carbine length gas system, as well as a 14.5-inch barrel with a carbine length gas system. This is especially true if the rifle is suppressed. Now, according to Geisley's documentation, very basic tools are needed. Just a vice block, a 332nd punch, a set of pliers, and a hammer of some sort, which makes sense. However, I suggest you have also a few other things as well. Some firearms cleaning solvent. In this case, I'm using Slip 725. This came in an Pro 7 bottle. I'm just reusing that. Some sort of firearm cleaning lubricant. I'm using Pro 7 LPX, but any other CLP will work fine. Firearms cleaning patches, as well as a paint pen. Let's get started. Let's go separate the lower and upper halves of the rifle. And doing so is pretty straightforward. Just remove the front and rear takedown pins. Pretty straightforward. The upper and lower receivers are separated. Then we're going to go need to remove the buffer and spring from the buffer extension, from the carbine extension. What I like to do is take the charging handle and bolt out of the receiver, and then use the blunt face of the charging handle to push down on the detent pin that retains the carbine buffer in place. Push down and should spring out of the way. I forgot to mention, ensure the firearm is clear, follow, um, follow all firearms safety rules. But now that we have this buffer out, let's go separate the spring from that of the buffer itself. Get this upper out of the way. Now let's go and clean our parts. Let's go and clean the spring and the buffer using firearm solvent and a cleaning patch. Gloves are recommended for this step. But these sorts of cleaning procedures are pretty much identical to that of a standard Air 15 carbine buffer and carbine buffer spring. Next, we have those parts be cleaned. Let's go and open our package. So we have our installation instructions. Pretty straightforward and has a diagram of how these are set up. What's interesting about the Geisley system is that the tungsten weight is towards the 
It actually, it makes sense. It's actually towards the front end of the buffer. Okay, we have a more solid surface, a concrete floor. Let's go and tap out our roll pin. out okay our roll pin is now out of our buffer let's put that to the side and let's go and remove our rubber buffer tip with a pair of pliers we have a pair of pliers and let's try and get our buffer away without chewing on it too much Once that is lifted, just use our hands and pull it out. Now that it's separated, let's go separate our buffer weights. We have three weights separated by rubber discs. Okay, keep in mind is that our tungsten buffer weight is that of a dull color, while our steel weights of that are of a shiny color. Let's go and replace our steel weight in the center with that of a buffer weight. That is made out of tungsten, and we'll go and re and stack all the weights back in place. So let's put our washer in our rubber plug in first. Then put our steel, our tungsten weight inside. Another rubber disc, our tungsten weight inside. A, another rubber disc, and then our steel weight inside. Once that is all in place, put the rubber buffer bit on it. Have it aligned with the, the buffer shell and then make sure that there is a hole and align it so that the roll pin can pass through freely. So with a rubber bit or bump stop in position, let's put it back into our little armor's block and tap our pin back in place. And we're using a rubber tipped or rubber mallet. We don't mar our buffer and damage it. Now let's take our steel buffer and put it in the bag. And let's go and label our bag as a steel buffer and not have any sort of confusion or mix up. Mark. mark steel on it and not have any confusion and let's go put this away now keep in mind is that while our buffer is configured to that of an h2 buffer there's still an h1 stamping on it which may cause a little bit of confusion so let's get our paint marker and while the whole buffer is dry let's go put down h2 our new marking on it on the uh, side as well as a face. And of course, this paint marker will rub away, but we can have those to more easily identify what sort of configuration this is in. Okay, we have all our parts back together. Let's go and lubricate our buffer and buffer spring. We've got ourselves a cleaning patch. Let's go saturate it with CLP. on it and then apply a liberal coat of it on our buffer 
and then let's go and get it on our spring as well. That way we can go and extend the life of these parts. Thin coat of oil is just what's needed. That's together. Let's go put our buffer back on our spring. It's a bit slippery. And then let's put our spring inside of our carbine extension, our buffer tube. There are detents in place. Next, just take our upper receiver, put our charging handle back end, as well as our bolt carrier group, which goes back in the rifle. And let's put our lower and upper halves back together. Good, now let's go and do a little bit of a function check. Everything seems to work. There we go. That's how you repair, or that's how you replace the buffer on the Geisley Super Duty. Thank you for watching.